remember this name, it's quickly becoming one of the world's largest hospitality brands, but it doesn't own a single hotel. How do they do that? The website connects people who want to rent out a room or a house with travelers who need a place to stay. It offers more than 600,000 listings in 192 countries. Brian Chesky is the company's CEO and co-founder. Welcome. Thank you, Charlie. Just for anybody who hasn't heard, Airbnb means... It originally stands for Air, Air Bed and, and Breakfast, breakfast right. and that's how it started. Um, I just moved up to San Francisco from Los Angeles, and I got here with my co-founder, uh, Joe Gebbia. Joe tells me the rent's $1,150, and I have $1,000 in the bank. It turns out that weekend, this international design conference was coming to San Francisco. All the hotels were sold out. We pulled the airbeds out of the closet, we inflated them, and we called it the Air Bed and Breakfast. We ended up hosting three people from around the world, Michael was a 45-year-old father of five from Utah. And Catherine was a 35-year-old woman from Boston. And Amol was a 30-year-old from India. But in 2009, you had 21,000 people. And now, within the last year, you've had 11 million people right. who are using your it's services. It's growing pretty fast. You know, J Jeff Jordan's here, who's, who's on, who, who was at eBay at the beginning. And he's on the Airbnb board and said the growth rates are at or above what eBay's were. So, so Airbnb has a, a future that is, that is stunning. Please, it'll be the next eBay. Airbnb has also spawned its own ecosystem of ordinary people who will now come clean your home, coordinate key exchanges, cook dinner for you and your guests, photograph rooms for rent. It used to be that corporations and brands had all the trust, but now a total stranger can be trusted like a company and provide the services of a company. And once you unlock that idea, it is so much bigger than homes. There is a whole generation of people that don't want everything mass produced. You're listening to these stories and hearing these hosts who would come off like crying, like you saved me. And I'm like, what do you mean you, I saved you? What the hell are you talking about? And they said, you know, my husband and I were gonna lose our apartment. We didn't know what to do with our apartment. And then one day we listed it on your website and now we have enough money that we can afford to like keep it. And this is a story we hear all the time and people do for supplemental income. We meet thousands of hosts that they depend on Airbnb to pay their rent or their mortgage. About half our hosts in New York depend on Airbnb to pay their rent. We focus on building a product people love. Met my host, I asked her a question. I said, how many people have you told about Airbnb? I was thinking she said 10, 20. She said 1,000 people. So we've grown because people like my host have told 1,000 people. Yeah, it's truly a better. word of mouth. Nothing's better than word of mouth. I actually think that travel is being undersized. It's the most underrated market in the world. I think in the future, people are gonna be living a month here, a few weeks there. What if we could design the entire trip and offer the entire trip from the time you leave your home, the time you come back to your home? We wanna make sure that when you're out and about in the city and you're walking around, we can make sure your experience in the city is really, really great. Obviously, it sounds like you're gonna to expand to a lot of different areas, we not just a place to stay. We are definitely gonna become much more than a place to stay in the future. From my window, I, I see first the sunlight and the rosy clouds and the dawn. Sometimes I hear a little chicken. That's what my window brings me. That makes you feel instantly like you're at home. It makes you feel like you're somewhere. I want you to make yourself at home here. I love having guests. I wanted to be mortgage free and um, I wanted to be more conscious about the way I was living and to keep everything simple, be you know, more minimalistic, not have so much stuff. <laughs> wow, is <laughs> when they drive up and see it and they walk through the door, it's definitely wow. Um, because they're surprised how spacious and light it is. Um, because it's fully insulated and got double glazed windows, it's very warm too. The um, guy who built this in Christchurch, um, he lived on his boat um, with his family for years, and so his thinking was, you know, space, <laughs> small spaces. So here we have storage under the seats, just like you would on a yacht. On a boat. 
yeah, housing is so expensive. Um, and people just can't afford mortgages these days, especially, you know, if you're on a minimum wage, you've got family. And since the earthquakes in Christchurch, there's been a big, big shift, big interest in tiny houses on wheels. These tops here are uh, multifunctional. You use them as a cutting board as well and extra bench, bench space. If you're uh, buying you one, uh, you want to make sure that the electricity and the gas and the plumbing has been installed properly and it's all certified. And you, something this size, mine's very big, it's 7 metres long, 4.2 metres high and 2.4 metres wide. So it's not something you travel around in, um, like a house truck or a caravan. You need, some, you need a piece of land, you need somewhere to put it and live in it. Permanently, yeah.